Upon completing this in-service, you will number one, identify risk factors associated with developing pressure injuries. Number two, list nutrition interventions for prevention and treatment. And number three, understand the role of nutrition in wound healing. Pressure injuries can be a common problem in long-term care. Identifying the risk factors associated with developing pressure injuries can aid with minimizing pressure injuries from occurring. When a pressure injury does occur, there are several interventions available to assist with the healing process. Medical nutritional therapy is an integral part of the wound management plan. Without adequate nutrition and hydration, healing is prolonged and quality of life diminishes. It is important to provide interventions that are appropriate for each individual resident and ones they will accept. Risk factors for developing pressure injuries include advanced age, and with that fragile skin, impaired or decreased mobility and decreased functional ability, urinary and fecal incontinence, poor nutritional status, undernutrition, malnutrition, or hydration deficits. Other factors include impaired cognition, resident refusal of some aspects of care, a healed injury, immobility, and drugs such as steroids that may affect wound healing. Medical nutrition therapy for prevention and treatment. As far as energy intake, provide individual energy intake based on underlying medical condition. Provide 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram body weight for adults at risk of a pressure injury who are assessed as being at risk of malnutrition. Provide 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram body weight for adults with a pressure injury who are assessed as being at risk of malnutrition. Adjust energy intake based on weight change or level of obesity. Adults who are underweight or who have had significant unintended weight loss may need additional energy intake. Revise and modify or liberalize dietary restrictions when limitations result in decreased food and fluid intake. These adjustments should be made in consultation with a medical professional and managed by a registered dietitian whenever possible. Caloric needs are ideally met by a healthy diet. However, some individuals are unable or unwilling to consume an adequate diet. Overly restricted diets may make food unpalatable and unappealing and therefore reduce intake. Offer fortified foods and or high calorie, high protein oral nutritional supplements between meals if nutritional requirements cannot be achieved by dietary intake. Oral nutritional supplements enhance foods and food fortifiers can also be used to combat unintended weight loss and malnutrition. Consider enteral or parental nutrition support when oral intake is inadequate. This must be consistent with the individual's goals. If oral intake is inadequate, enteral or parental nutrition may be recommended if consistent with the individual's wishes. Protein intake. Provide adequate protein for positive nitrogen balance for adults assessed to be at risk of a pressure injury or who already have a pressure injury. Offer 1.25 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram body weight daily for adults at risk of pressure injury who are assessed to be at risk of malnutrition when compatible with goals of care. Reassess as condition changes. Offer 1.25 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram body weight daily for adults with an existing pressure injury who are assessed to be at risk of malnutrition when compatible with goals of care. Reassess as condition changes. Offer high calorie, high protein nutritional supplements in addition to the usual diet to adults with nutritional risk and pressure injury risk if nutritional requirements cannot be achieved by dietary intake. Assess their renal function to ensure that high levels of protein are appropriate for the individual. Supplement with high protein, arginine, and micronutrients for adults with a pressure injury category stage 3 or 4 or multiple pressure injury when nutritional requirements cannot be met with traditional high calorie and protein supplements. Adequate hydration. Provide and encourage adequate daily fluid intake for hydration for an individual assessed to be at risk for or with a pressure injury. This must be consistent with the individual's conditions and goals. 
Monitor individuals for signs and symptoms of dehydration, including change in weight, skin turgor, urine output, or elevated serum sodium and serum osmolality. Provide additional fluid for individuals with dehydration, elevated temperature, vomiting, profuse sweating, diarrhea, or heavily draining wounds. Vitamins and minerals provide and encourage individuals assessed to be at risk of pressure injury or with a pressure ulcer to consume a balanced diet including good sources of vitamins and minerals. Provide and encourage individuals assessed to be at risk of a pressure injury or with a pressure injury to take vitamin and mineral supplements when dietary intake is poor or deficiencies are confirmed or suspected. Test your knowledge on guidelines for pressure injury management. Question number one, which nutrient is most important to pressure injury healing? A, protein, B, carbohydrates, C, fat, or D, none of the above? And the answer to question number one, which nutrient is most important to pressure injury healing? And that would be A, protein. Question number two, which of the following are risk factors for pressure injuries? A, poor nutrition, B, advanced age, C, immobility, or D, all of the above? And the answer to question number two, which of the following are risk factors for pressure injuries? And that would be D, all of the above. Question number three, an individual assessed as being malnourished with a pressure injury requires A, 20 to 25 kilocalories per kilogram, B, 40 to 45 kilocalories per kilogram, C, 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram, or D, 35 to 40 kilocalories per kilogram. And the answer to question number three, an individual assessed as being malnourished with a pressure injury requires C, 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram. Question number four, true or false? A resident with pressure injury should have nutrition interventions that meet their individual needs. And the answer to question number four is true. Question number five, true or false? Double portions of meat should be ordered for all residents with pressure injuries. And the answer to question number five is false. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or consulting dietitian services, please contact us at 1-800-761-9200 or nutritioncaresystems.com.